Well, now we're going to discuss uh, one of the things that uh, Professor Bedard Hahn and I noticed in digging the, the soil pit, and that's the fact that just about uh, 70 centimeters depth, there's a very abrupt boundary from a sort of uh, olive yellow uh, glacial till to a much darker, uh, almost black uh, glacial till. And whether or not this is a different till or something connected to uh, chemical and biochemical and biological processes happening in, in the ground, I think is a good question. So actually what we're going to be discussing is, is, is perhaps two possible ideas or two possible hypotheses for what this very abrupt uh, boundary between the, the, uh, the olive yellow upper unit and the almost black uh, lower unit. And of course one of the very plausible things is that perhaps this is uh, a boundary between uh, two tills of, of different uh, color and structure and so forth. So it could be that the lower, the lower till, the black one that we can see, and in, in this in this uh, section you can see the, the, the very sharp boundary between the darker lower unit and the lighter colored upper unit. Uh, sort of a almost a, I call it an orangey brown. I know that's not on the on the Munsell color charts, but that's what it looks like to me. Uh, and so one of the possibilities is that this is simply an older till. The dark material is an older till, and there is a, a, a formation that mapped by the uh, by the Christensen, uh, the the first person that did much of the glacial geology in this area, uh, called the Sutherland Association, which is a much older till, and. It and it's usually d uh, dark in color like this, uh, and so that could be the reason. So in that case, if we had two till units, I would say that the older one is darker, perhaps uh, you know of the order of up to maybe a hundred thousand years old, and the upper one is the is the glacial till that was deposited by the very last glacier that was here, so that would make it in the order of twelve to fifteen thousand years old. So that's one hypothesis. The second hypothesis uh, also connects to this marked difference in color and, um, in a, and in fact would relate to the fact that uh, soil or in a condition of, of not being oxidized or being reduced often has a very dark color and in the situations where, the, where we have oxidation or uh, you know oxygen uh, more actively involved in the processes will have a lighter colored. So the, uh, uh, the lower unit could be described as sort of an unoxidized zone. And that would mean that the kind of processes that have been affecting the upper part of the soil, uh, involving uh, you know water and perhaps some of the microorganisms that are in the soil and so forth, are not as active in that lower uh, unit because it tends to normally be uh, saturated with water and anaerobic or, 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 or unoxidized, reduced. Uh, is there any evidence to support that idea? Well, I think if we it is evidence, for starters, I guess it's the, it's the color and so forth of the condition of the lower unit, but there are several things in the upper unit that I think would support the idea of that, even though it's the subsoil of this soil, that being, let's say, a, a layer in the soil that's very geochemically active. And some of the things that could be happening in there, uh, we see lots of, of the gypsum, which is calcium sulfate. Well, where did the sulfur come from? Well, chances are the sulfur came from uh, a mi minerals called iron sulfide or pyrite, which is in the which is in the marine shale, which is also a, a major component of the of the glacial till here. So it's the oxidation of pyrite that gives you the gypsum. So that would be at least one shred of evidence that supports a, a stronger degree of oxidation and so forth in the in the upper unit. There's also, I think, in this upper unit, some very interesting, as I said, these these sort of orangey brown colors which I think may relate to a, a mineral called nitrogyrosite, which is also a mineral that forms in this, in this zone of oxidation. Uh, and it's, it's an indicator of, of, of uh, it, it's a mineral that involves, I, I believe, sodium, uh, sulfur, and so forth. So it is also an, another indication of, a, of, of stronger oxidation in, in this particular zone. But I think we might sum it up by saying, this, like so many things, when you look at a soil profile, uh, there's often those, uh, uh, those, those features of the soil that we understand pretty well and I think have a fairly good idea about their genesis or how they formed, but we often run into, uh, into features and to, uh, that are 
that aren't so easily understood. And I think in this case, uh, those um, features that I've just discussed down in the subsoil, I would include, at least for me, I would include those in, the, in that group of, uh, of questions that we ask about the soil and, and don't really uh, often don't know the answer. So as scientists, we, we, we generate some hypotheses or we make some guesses and we look for the various evidence of, to support our different ideas and from that uh, we move on perhaps to design an experiment or take some measurements that might uh, either refute or support the, uh, the hypotheses that we've generated.